Hi listeners, welcome to the new session on Law, Permits and License in Event Management. I am Dr. Arvind Thiers, an edutech expert for the past 11 years, specialized in social media marketing, e-commerce, e-tailing and business law. Every event is an experience that is carefully designed to deliver an impact on the audience. With each passing day, the number of events being professionally managed is increasing. Thus, there is a growing need to regulate events and event companies. While we understand the laws, rules, regulations are created to protect people, to enforce rights and to solve conflicts. Breaking them or not following them leads to a punishable offense. In this unit, we will study the laws associated with event management, license, permits and no objection certificates from different agencies. After this video, you should be able to learn about various laws influencing event management, become familiar with different license required during event execution, understand the permission and NOC required to be obtained. Organizing an event is a huge task. It takes months of planning, fundraising, coordination and networking. There are unprecedented heights of customers and stakeholders' expectations. Hence, majority of the activities at the event are outsourced for the proficiency. In the light of this, it is very essential to discuss legal issues which are of concern to the entrepreneurs in the field of every industry which primarily consists of entertainment tax, government permits and license. The documentation work is in the form of approvals or NOC. That means no objection certificates from different departments. To ensure the smooth running of an event, the event organizers must make sure that all legal procedures are followed. This unit will help us to understand the basic rules and regulations which are necessary to satisfy authorities such as local government, police and department of the environment while organizing an event. The laws are intended to prescribe guidelines for event organizers to ensure that venues and event activities are safe and do not disturb neighboring community. These makes even safer identify basic standards necessary to satisfy authorities and provide a consistent approach to events at the state level. However, rules and regulations must be interpreted keeping the size and complexity of the event in consideration so that appropriate information is utilized from the guidelines. Each event has its own set of activities and requirements. Therefore, approvals required will depend upon the type of events. Event organizers must visit the local authorities to determine the required permission in the area of event. When the event is to happen in an area or a premises that has a permanent approval for events, then the number of approvals required by event organizers reduces. However, risk management and other matters outlined within these guidelines still need to be addressed. Let's discuss about laws in event management. In that, first we are going to discuss on venue or property related laws. The selection of venue is influenced by many factors. Even planners have to select a venue which perfectly matches with the needs of uh, event to be hosted. However, to hold an event, many times the venue owner provides event organizers with the list of uh, licenses which they need to obtain before the event begins at the selected venue needs either buying or owning the venue or acquiring it for the purpose of holding an event there. The three modes to get a venue for hosting an event are owning the property through buying wide execution of sale deed under Transfer of Property Act 1882. It is also called as TP Act 1882. The next one is acquiring the property through license for the use of property under the 
Eastman Act 1882. The last one is acquiring the interest in the property through lease under TP Act 1882. TP means transfer of property Act 1882. It has been observed that the most popular mode of uh, gaining access to the event venue is by acquiring it. However, here we will briefly study about all three modes and laws related to them. Owning a property for hosting an event through sale. Section 5 of Transfer of Property Act 1882 describes the term sales as a transfer of ownership in exchange for a price paid or promised or part paid and part promised. A sale of immovable property for value more than 100 rupees can only be made through a registered instrument which is normal terms is known as a sale deed. The essential elements of a sales are first one parties. There are two parties a buyer and a seller. The subject matter. The subject matter is the land or venue for hosting the event. Next one is transfer of conveyance. There are two recognized modes of conveyance. The delivery of possession and registration of a sale deed. The sale price or consideration is another one. The price is the essential part of a contract because price consider as the consideration. So in a contract consideration is essential otherwise it is called as gift. So price is the essential part of a contract of sale and unless the price is there the contract of sale cannot be enforced under the court of law. In the continuation of the above set topic let's see how acquiring access to property to hold an event through license according to the Indian Eastment Act 1882. License is when one person grant to another or to a definite number of other person a right to do or continue to do in or upon the immovable property of the grantor something which would in the absence of such right be unlawful and such right does not amount to an easement or an interest in the property. The right is called a license. So an event planner has to seek license from the owner of the property to use the venue for hosting the event. Here it is worth mentioning that it is duty of the event manager to ensure that the venue which he has hired for hosting the event is as per the needs and demand of the event. Let's look on to how to acquire access to property to hold an event through lease. As per TP Act, Transfer of Property Act 1882, a lease of immobile property is a transfer of a right to enjoy such property made for a certain time express or implied so express means by documenting implied means it's not documenting by act or in perpetuity perpetuity means uh, long term successor will enjoy the rights so in consideration of a price paid or promised or of money a share of goods services or any other thing of a value to be rendered periodically or on specified occasion to the transferor by the transferee who accept the transfer on such terms. Let us discuss about lesser lessee and premium and rent. The transferor is called the lesser, the transferee is called the lessee. The price is called the premium and the money, share, service or other things to be so rented is called the rent. Usually even managers holding event of similar nature apply for a lease of the venue for a certain period. They enter into an agreement with the owner of the lease of the venue. Even managers who host events like marriage parties, fundraising, gala dinners, birthday weddings and anniversaries take lease of venues like uh, lawns and marriage halls for conducting these ceremonies. It is the responsibility of the event company to find out and comply with all the pertinent rules, regulations and license requirements. It is worth uh, mentioning that the event managers must make it uh, practical to pay particular attention to workplace health 
and safety regulations. Let's see some of the relevant uh, regulations which a public event must comply during build up or breakdown of a venue as per event requirements. So these are the laws related with that. First one is Environmental Protection Act 1986. Definitely we are giving more importance to the environment. So when an event happening in a, in a remote area and nearby uh, a wetland, definitely it will affect the wetland. There are laws which is meant for protecting the wetlands. So there are uh, Wetland Protection Act. So same like uh, you know, Environmental Act. It is often seen that big events pose threat to the environment and to the people living in vicinity. There are dangerous risks of uh, pollution, spills, effluent leakage and some indirect concern like a waste and garbage disposal of the event. Some events like a festivals and meals create a lot of pollution which may be harmful to the environment as well as dangerous to people. In such cases, any event organized by a professional event manager should comply with the provisions of uh, Environmental Protection Act and 1986 with respect to water pollution noise pollution, air pollution, etc. It should be the duty of the event manager to take proper care that events which pollute the environment such as burning of uh, effigies. You, you know that uh, burning of effigies in uh, Christmas, okay, burning of effigies in uh, Ram Leela festival and uh, submerging effigies in water during Vinayak Chaturthi festival must not cause damage to land, water and air leading to pollution and affecting people. Let's discuss on pollution check measures. There are certain guidelines given by the environmental committee which needs to be followed by the event manager. Definitely it is very mandatory before hosting an event. These guidelines can be procured from the respective police units or police station. For example, in Delhi, it is the Delhi police unit. The event manager needs to obtain a permit from the licensing unit of the Delhi police before organizing an event which has threats to the environment. Let's discuss on noise pollution, how it affects the environment. So noise pollution regulation control rules 2000 defines regulating and controlling noise producing sources is necessary to maintain the ambient air quality standards and tranquility of the vicinity with respect to noise. The contributor of noise level in public places are from sources such as industrial activity, construction activity, generator sets, vehicular horns, loudspeakers, public address system, music system and other mechanical devices. Since increasing noise pollution has harmful effect on human health and the psychological well-being of a people. You know, the government makes rules for the regulation or regulating and controlling noise pollution. For example, a loudspeaker in public event or public address system can only be used after obtaining permission from the authority. It is very mandatory. It is mostly not allowed to be used at uh, between 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. because most of those time is again like a sleeping time for the inhabitants where the event is happening except in closed premises for communication within for example auditorium conference rooms community halls and banquet halls next let's discuss on electricity regulation act this act consolidates the law relating to generation transmission distribution trading and use of electricity this also enables the regulator to take measure conducive to development of electricity industry, promoting competition therein, protecting interest of consumers and supply of electricity to all areas, rationalization of electricity tariff, ensuring transparent policy regarding subsidies, promotion of uh, efficient and environmental friendly policies and for connecting matters. States may vary from uh, each other when it comes to transmission, distribution, use of uh, electricity and electricity tariff. The event organizer must collect through information on these aspects when organizing even in different state or nation. 
Next, we can discuss on very important point, Building Regulation Act. So Building Regulation is a set of rules that specify the minimum standards for constructed objects such as building and non-building structures. The prime objective of these regulation is to protect public health, safety and general welfare in context of the construction and occupancy of building and structures. Regulations also provide specific requirements applying to special construction objects such as uh, canopies, signs, pedestrian walkways, parking lots, radio and television antennas and minimum standards for sanitization, water supply, light ventilation, fire prevention and control, energy efficiency, stairs and halls, mechanical electrical plumbing, side drainage and storage, appliance, lighting, fixtures, occupancy rules, swimming pool, regulations and so on. So let's discuss on fire precautions regulation act. The act deal with the safety from fire. It specifies the demarcation of a fire zones, restriction on construction of building in each fire zone, classification of a building based on occupancy, types of a building construction, according to fire resistance of the structural and non-structural components, other restrictions and other requirements necessary to minimize danger to life from fire, smoke, fumes or panic before the building can be evacuated. The event organizers must keep all these specification in mind while constructing event premises. Definitely it is very important. You know also the fire protection technique have to be based on the fire behavior characteristics of different materials and structural elements used in venue designing. Next one is Excise Act. The major job of the Excise Department is to regulate, control and monitor, manufacture, possession, import, export, transport, sale and consumption of liquor and other intoxication. The department grant license to distilleries, bottling plants for the supply of liquor as well as for the consumption of liquor on-site premises like hotels, restaurants and clubs. Licenses are also given under the Act for holding hosting private parties as well as for the storage for personal consumption beyond permissible limits. Even managers planning to have the provision of alcohol in their event premises would definitely need to be obtained the license from the excise department. Next very important luxury tax. There are some convenience taxes which are charged in India depending upon the services available or goods bought at a particular businesses. Amongst these service tax, value added tax, service charge and luxury tax from a part of uh, many bills. Luxury tax is a source of revenue namely in the hospitality industry including hotels, spas, banquet halls, gyms and resorts. Again like uh, entertainment tax, luxury tax varies from state to state. The term luxury refers to use of goods, services, property and facility for enjoyment or comfort or consumption by any customer that are extraordinary to the necessity of the life. This includes accommodation or space provided in a banquet hall which includes air cooling, air conditioning, chairs, tables, linen, utensils and vessels, shamiana tent, pavilion, electricity, water, fuel, interior or exterior decoration, music, orchestra, live telecast and you know all. The event organizers need to consider this tax when organizing any event such as conference, workshop in hotel or resort. Let's look on to civil and tortious liability and related laws. Duty of care. It is a fundamental legal principle which normally applies to all event of taking responsible care to avoid act or omission that could injure employees, contractors, users, participants and visitors. This is called the duty of care and is covered by the area of law known as tort. So tort is a civil wrong. In tort there is a term called indemnification. So you have to search what exactly indemnification. It mainly apply in event management. So I am giving that as a activity. You have to learn about 
indemnify or indemnification or law of indemnification torts are we understand are a breach of duty owed to other people and imposed by law and in this it differs from duty arising from contracts which are agreed between contracting party unlike criminal law which is concerned with punishment and deterrence the law of tort is concerned with the compensation in context of even management duty of care means taking action that will prevail any foreseeable risk of injury to people who are directly affected by or involved in the event this would include the event staff volunteers the performers the audience or spectators and the public in the surrounding area it is the duty of the event manager to take essential care of the event stakeholders and breach of such duty because of which any person or person suffers damages many result in negligence on the part of event coordinator the duty of a care towards stakeholders is not only a moral duty but also a legal duty as well however there is a no general rule of uh, law defining such duty and is often depend upon cases to cases the law of tort in india says that if a person here the event coordinator at the time of act or omission or of the act could reasonably foresee any injury to her or his stakeholders then she or he owes a duty to prevent the injury and failure to do that makes him liable in india to decide culpability we have to determine what a reasonable man would have foreseen and thus from an idea of how he would have behaved under the circumstances thus any negligence by the event coordinator which result in huge damage or injury and could be foreseeable but the um, coordinator showed lack of observance or negligence of duty of care will make him or her liable for the damages when planning an event organizers must be well informed about all the necessary permits needed for event well in advance so to answer your question do you need a permit to host an event definitely yes there are plenty of permits that can take some time and legal work to secure so it's wise to give yourself enough time before the event to get everything you need so next is intellectual property rights intellectual property as we understand is a property that is the creation of human mind it is a property created by the intellect of a human being every human being has uh, a right over this property to use to to restrict it from uh, being used by other person the law related to ipr needed to be considered in event especially for the following to play music and even manager needs valid license and permission to play music especially by live performance in case one does not have a valid license from an authorized organization to play their music and even can be sued under ipr laws use of trademarks and logos under trademark act the registered logos and uh, you know trademarks cannot be used in any even without prior permission use of designs and artwork the copyright designs and uh, patent act ensures that patent designs any type cannot be used by any other person any company owning any logos or trademark sign would like to protect this claim and would not like it to be used by others the protection of trademark ownership is generally covered within legislation including trademarks act the copyright design and patent act the legislation prevents any other party from the use of logo motto and related word by another party without the owner's permission it is quite expected that the event company should be aware of the risk of a misrepresenting their event next is ppl phonographic performance limited license so what exactly ppl the law protects music rights in different ways this means that business and organization playing recorded music in public whether live or uh, via cd radio tv broadcast background music system or other sources will usually need to obtain ppl playing music in public without the appropriate license in place is copyright infringement 
and is unfair to the members that is performers record companies songwriters composers and uh, music publishers next one is iprs indian performing rights society limited license this license is required for playing performance non recorded music in public it is a license for the artist of the artist for instance in india when a popular artist performs live the event will require an iprs license also the artist need to be a registered member of iprs unlike ppl iprs issues license to the music users it collects royalty for the artist from the artist on behalf of its registered artist members such as lyricist composers then publishers and performers of music and distributes the royalty to the music owners or members next one is excise license excise license is the license which the event organizer needs to produce in order to serve alcohol in a live or recorded music event in india however when the event is organized at an alcohol non licensed premises the organizer is not required to procure the license next one is loudspeaker license any event held in any public or private venue any event held in a public or private venue needing to use a loudspeaker requires a loudspeaker license the permission needs to be obtained from a local police authorities next one is premise license a license of the premise allows the event organizers to carry out all the premiseable activity at the venue the activity include late night entertainment between 11 pm and 8 am large scale events allowing an audience of over 500 people selling alcohol as well as serving food and beverages between 11 pm and 5 pm and so on the license can be obtained from municipal authority under which venue falls next is performance license this is the license which allows a child anybody below 18 years to take part in a musical event and make a paid performance again the license can be obtained from the local authority so if the event has a performance made by a child and is a paid performance the event organizer are required to procure performance license from a local authority let's move on to entertainment tax so what is entertainment tax so entertainment tax is charged by state government on activities such as exhibitions performance amusement games sports activity and cinematographic exhibitions etc the tax legislation varies from state to state usually the entertainment tax is levied on uh, amount charges for entering into the entertainment activity some states have the entertainment tax as high as 50% of the entry fee in entertainment programs where the objective is to promote art culture sports and programs for philanthropic charitable or religious educational purposes the state government exempt entertainment taxes so all these kind of events will get or entertainments will get a tax holiday there is permanent exemption from a entertainment tax for the programs such as drama performance including plays ballets puppetry shows organized by society registered under society registration act 1860 as well as trust here it is to be noted that entertainment tax is calculated and paid in advance based on the estimated number of tickets to be sold so it should be paid in advance not after the event moreover the tickets need to be stamped by the commercial taxes department before they are sold out to the audience in case the number of tickets sold are less the event organizers can claim refund from the department next is public works department license you need to get this when you have a generator at your event next is foreign artist permission whenever you have people from another nationality performing at your event you require to get a license for that separately visa and contract copy between the artist and the employee company if you have any foreign artist performing it would be preferable in this case 
to get artist on a business visa and not an employment visa. Next is permissions and NOC. So as I said, NOC is no objection certificate. It's a written document obtained as approval from the local authority. In case of organizing an event, the event organizer need to obtain NOC from different departments. The list of the department as follows. The no objection certificate from the additional collector office. No objection certificates from the local police station. No objection certificate from the traffic police department. Because the event management company should have to give an assurance. It won't affect the tranquility of the people or free movement of the people. That's why no objection certificate from the traffic police is needed. Next is no objection certificate from the fire brigade. No objection certificate from the electrical inspector. No objection certificate from the health department. No objection certificate from the Rengabhumi Parini Rekshan Mandal. And if it is in Maharashtra only. Certificate regarding fitness of the machinery in case of amusement rights etc. Even application details when writing to authorities all these components should be included. Even venue details, even venue location, brief history of the event or venue duration of the event, schedule and timing, expected number of uh, people, admission arrangement, open to public by invitation with tickets, detail of activities and how, when, where, functions of a uh, key personnel like a uh, name and full description of a uh, event controller, safety officer and health and sanitization in charge. Next, event control and uh, communication like uh, location of a central control room, who will be there and what means of communication will be used. Any particular arrangements for spectators with special needs pre-lunch ceremonies etc. Overview of large equipment and temporary structures like a staging, sanitary facilities and lighting. Contract details of event organizers, administrators and venue owners. The site plan must include maps showing location and details of transportation hubs like bus stops, railway stations and taxi stands etc. Places of interest at the venue or event, meeting points, entry or exit, holding area, watchtower at a vantage location for observation and monitoring the crowd, CCTV coverages at all vulnerable location to be monitored at the control room, health facilities, shopping areas, food joints, hazard points, emergency exit, event planners help their clients organize and orchestrate event of all types and sizes. Everything from Weddings and social gatherings to other, uh, you know, industry specific or professional event and even planner job is to make sure and he have to think advance and make arrangements to avoid those mishaps, ensuring that any problems will be handled appropriately. So law and regulations are important in all sectors and very much so in uh, even industry. Uh, these not only protect the rights of stakeholders, including the audience but also set a code of conduct for event organizers with the events becoming more and more professional in their execution requiring most of the activities to be outsourced. A great demand has been created for regularizing the event industry. The unit discussed about the act, license, approval and no objection certificate required to conduct an event. Hope you enjoyed the session and had a good learning also. Thank you.